If you're struggling to get started with studying for the MCAT, then the last thing you want is resource overwhelm. I scored a 516 on the MCAT, so I'm going to go over in this video exactly the small, most simplest list of MCAT resources I would use to study if I, for some reason, had to start all over from scratch and study for the MCAT again. My goal with this video is that you watch it and you go from completely overwhelmed, overthinking, spending way too much time researching all the different question banks and prep books that you could buy to having a simple but essential list and you never have to think about which resources to use for each phase of studying again. So let's get right into the video. All right, we're going to go in order. So the first phase you're studying is content review. The resources you want for this phase are the content review books, three practice exams, and then Jack Weston for Clara's practice. So the set of books that I recommend are Kaplan. And when you buy them new, you will also get three practice exams with the purchase of the book. So that's two for one. That's perfect. And then the Jack Weston is free. So the way that you're going to use these, obviously the bulk of it is just getting through the chapters and the content review books. And then in the beginning, middle and end, you're going to take a practice exam. Yes, you're going to take a practice exam before you start any studying. Just do it. It is very good to get that baseline. Does not matter how low it is. Just do it. Take the diagnostic exam. And then with the CARS practice, so the Kaplan books are going to have a CARS book and you're going to kind of like walk through and learn some strategy and they're going to give you some tips and tricks for CARS and your test taking skills for that section. And then once you kind of get through the chapters in that CARS book, I want you to keep practicing and you're going to use Jack Weston to fulfill that practice. Even if it's just like one passage every other day during that phase one of studying, I just want you to like constantly be thinking of tweaking and modifying and improving your CARS taking strategy. Once you get through all your content review books, you're on to phase two of studying. And this is passage based practice. So actually when I was studying for the MCAT, I had planned to go from content review to AAMC material, but then my second and third practice exams were both a 502 and I kind of freaked out that the third practice exam didn't improve. So I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I went back to the drawing board and decided I need more passage-based practice before I moved on to the AMC material. And truly it was the absolute best thing I could have done. I ended up purchasing UWorld, which is what I highly, highly, highly recommend for your passage-based practice in that phase two of studying. And then the second thing you want for phase two is more practice exams. So you've run out of the practice exams with your content review books. Now I recommend buying blueprint exams for was perfect for me in phase two. And so with this, it's similar to phase one, but instead of reading chapters, you're going through practice questions, whether it's 40, 60, or hundred practice questions per day. And the way that I set this up was doing cars practice my first hour of the morning. And now I have that passage based practice. So we're using you world for that. We'll do three passages that would take 30 minutes and then 30 minutes to review. So that's my first hour of the day. The rest of the day is doing with my you world questions in the other sections. So I would swap between either bio, chem, or psych day. But yeah, all of my day was basically doing practice questions from you world. And then however long your phase two of studying is, you basically just want to divide equally and have those four practice exams. Again, like beginning, two in the middle, and in the end, have them evenly spaced out so you can really, really improve in between your practice exams. Next is phase three of your studying. And the resource you want to get for this is the AAMC bundle. This comes with multiple full length practice exams as well as thousands of passage-based practice questions. So your phase three is going to be structured the same way as phase two was, but the resource is just different. It's all AAMC content because that's the company that makes the MCAT. So that's why you kind of want to end with their content. The most important tip for phase two and phase three studying is that you are always timing yourself when you're doing this passage-based practice because you want to be ready for test day and not get used to spending three minutes per question and then running out of time and having to guess B for like the last 10 questions on your MCAT exam. Again, that is something I did the first time I took the MCAT. So I first took the MCAT in 2016 and then my score expired four years later. That's why I took it again. That's when I got a 516. One thing that I remembered didn't go amazing with my first MCAT, I got a 509, was that I ran out of time. And again, like that first time I didn't do something like you wrote in between. I like read my books and then I went to the AMC material. And so starting early with that you world passage-based practice and always timing yourself and then going to the AMC bundle and again always timing yourself that's like months of timing yourself and practicing the test day timing so you're going to be pretty confident going into test day that you're not going to run out of time since you've been practicing it for so long last but not least this is the resource that you're going to want to use throughout all phases and that is flashcards here's the only place in the video where i'm going to give you an option just based on what you think is best for you so the two options are whether you want to do handwritten flashcards or you want to use anki for flashcards now as a matter student. I think Anki is amazing. First year of med school, I woke up, did Anki every 
day. And I think it was such a good way to solidify the information. It's an easy, easy, easy way to get into the routine. Once you're past the learning curve of using Anki in the first place, it's really easy to get into that routine of just wake up, do your Anki and then start studying. But I will say like, I'm still not a fan of pre-made cards. I think you should create cards as you're learning content and as you're noticing your own weaknesses. And I think your set of cards should be completely unique to you instead of just randomly unsuspending like 500 cards a day and trying to get through that content that you have no context from. Maybe you haven't even gotten through that chapter in your content review books and you're trying to like learn it with no context. I don't think Anki is helpful in that way at all. But if you want to make your own cards, then I think it can be super, super helpful. And the key here is being super, super, super picky on how many cards you make. You don't make a card on every single vocab word or thing that you aren't sure about. You're solidifying the information every time you're doing practice questions at the end of each chapter in content review. And you're solidifying it every time you do passage-based practice. Your flashcards are for things you keep missing over and over. Like when you're reviewing the answer explanations for practice questions, then if there's something that keeps coming up and you're just like reading it and it's not sticking, you don't get it, then watch another YouTube video on it, try to learn mnemonics for it, and then make a card for it. So you have to go through like a lot of layers, I guess, to, in my opinion, make an Anki card when you're doing MCAT studying. Otherwise you're gonna wake up and have like 2000 cards to do every morning. And then like, you're not gonna get through as much study material as you want. And I don't think you should be spending more time on Anki than passage-based practice. So that's my kind of spiel for Anki. An easy way to automatically make sure you don't make too many cards is <laughs> handwritten flashcards because you can only write so much. And if you tried to make a handwritten flashcard on every little topic or thing you aren't sure about, you're gonna have thousands and it would take you forever just to make them, let alone do them. So I personally, with the philosophy of being really, really picky and only concepts that I kept missing over and over and over, it was completely doable to have handwritten flashcards. So the last resource that you wanna use through all, all phases is flashcards, whether it's Anki or handwritten or Quizlet, whatever, all the same philosophy. The philosophy is the main thing. Flashcards with that philosophy is the main thing that will help you be really, really successful. And whatever you choose, make sure you do them every day or majority of your study days. And that is the key to getting the most out of your flashcards. All right, that is truly all you need to study for the MCAT. I think you'll be super successful. Go buy the things on the list and get started. No more overthinking with the two exceptions. One, maybe you would benefit from the accountability and structure of an MCAT course. In that case, consider that one addition. And two, I think there's some free resources out there that when used well and strategically can really maximize your MCAT studying. So be sure to watch the next episode in this series and I'll go over those free resources and exactly how to use them so that you can maximize your studying with those extra resources versus again, getting resource overwhelmed. So see you in the next video.